ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نعبد ونستعين ونؤمن به ونتأكل عليه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأدعو لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. I greet each and every one of us uh, that has been striving on the path of our life this month of Ramadan. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of us. Today is another day. We want to look at what we know as dhikr. The word dhikri. It's singular. Sometimes we use askar. Al askar is the plural of dhikr, which means remembrance of Allah. Azza wa Jalla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Dayayu al-Ladi, a'uz billahi min ash-shaitan al-rajim. Yayu al-Ladi na amanu hithku la dhikran kasira wa sabi'u bukratan wa asila. The all you believe do not remain silent or not remembering Allah. Do not be quiet. Let your tongue continue to remember Allah day and night, every second. And this is one of the difference between a Muslim and a non-Muslim. For Muslim, everything we do, we want to earn the reward of Allah. And that is why Prophet has taught us that whatever we want to do, we must remember Allah starting the activity and end it with remembrance of Allah. So our life basically is based on remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jalla. Now, having known what decrease remembrance of Allah, this remembrance of Allah that we're saying is not only on utterances because Prophet Sallallahu has told us that even seeking for knowledge is an act of remembrance of Allah. Going out there to look for means of sustenance in an halal way is a means of decree, remembrance of Allah. Okay? So we should know that it is not only sitting down in the corner of the mosque or in our room shouting la ilaha in the last istic farm although they are part of it but we should know that remembrance of allah dhikri extends beyond that now what are the etiquettes of this dhikri the first etiquette is intention having good intention connectivity with allah Knowing that we want to do istighfar, it is not just by saying astaghfirullah, istighfirullah, no. Sit down in your mind. Are you really seeking forgiveness of Allah? Reciting the Quran, this is the month of Quran. This is the month that every one of us, we are relating with the Quran. It is means of decree, remembrance of Allah. But that Quran, as you are reciting it, are you pondering over it? Do you have the intention that these verses I'm reading, I want to imbibe it. I want to internalize it. Internalizing the words, the verses that we are reading in the Quran is an act of remembrance of Allah. So all this, we should know that the first thing is our intention. Having good intention that we are in the presence of our Lord. We want to take to the dictates of our creator is very important so intention is one secondly our sincerity there are a lot of people outside there are a lot of muslims they can do thousands of istifar they do thousands of tahmid alhamdulillah they do millions of uh tesbah but do we do we see the effects now why why because our sincerity alas one says after you have 
Seek from Mala. Don't seek for any other thing. It's so hard to fight here. We read it several times in a day. Yeah, can I do? Where yeah, can I stand? So our sincerity with Allah is very important in doing dhikri. And that is why today we ask ourselves, with all the dhikri, when Prophet Hassan said, if you do it a hundred times in a day, in another hadith he said 70 times. Can you see that? It's as simple as that. But with the sincerity of mind, with knowing that this as how the dhikri is for Allah and Allah only, and after doing it, we are not going to end, but we are not expecting. Yeah, can I do? Why yeah, can I stand? It is Allah who seek our help from. So, the second etiquette of doing dhikri, doing our askar, is sincerity. After a good intention, then we have to be sincere. We have to do it and for Allah alone, a class near. ويسبح الرعد بحمده والملائكة من خيفته ويرسل الصواعق فيصيب بها من يشاء وهم يجادلون في الله وهو شديد المحال. The third one is purification. In as much as Allah is pure, He promised all that He will not accept anything except pure. There was an adit that Prophet Hazar was telling the Swahaba, the companions, that a man came, he is so dirty, he's dusty. What he wears is haram. What he eats is haram. And he's saying, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. Do you think Allah was accept such a person? No. So purity of intention, purity of body, purity of place, Purity of what you put in your mouth is very important for Allah to accept your decree. It's an etiquette. So the first thing is making sure that our intention is pure is for Allah only. Then the environment that want to do their scar is clean. As well as our body, the cloth. And that's why Islam says if you go to toilets, you have to clean up yourself. After that, perform ablution. Ablution is a means of purification. So it's very encouraging that anytime you are doing a scare, make sure the environment is clean as well as you in ablution. It aids our connectivity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third point, the, the last one I want to mention here is you are facing the Qibla. If you have the opportunity, Remember, we say Askar is every time. Our tongue should not be at rest, except when we are in, in the ladies or gents, that we cannot do it. But anything outside that, our tongue should not be at rest, except remembrance of Allah. So the next one is facing the Qibla. Then our humility. Let's render ourselves all, all humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's very important. Then as well as knowing that fully well that Allah will accept our decree. Then the next thing I want us to know is that there are some beautiful askars. This is the month of Ramadan. There are several hadiths concerning this month. There's an idea that Prophet Islam said the first ten part of Ramadan is for mercy. Seek for mercy of Allah in this month. The second aspect is for forgiveness. Seek for forgiveness. Istighfar. Do a lot of istighfar. Do a lot of tasbih. Subhanallah. Walhamdulillah. Walla ilaha illallah. Allah akbar. Prophet Islam once said. That if you do subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah wa azim, hundred times in a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we put the person in paradise, become inmate of paradise. Surah to Baikara, verse, the first, the first verse is one to five, then followed by ayah to Krisi, 
the next two verses after Christi, then the last three verses of Bakora. Ah, uh, Prophet Hassan said, if you recite it in your house, Shaitan will not enter into that house before evening, if you recite it in the morning. And if you recite it in the evening, it won't enter that house till morning. He said, if you recite swat a class for like one else three, three times before going to bed, Shaitan will not have any impact on you, no matter what. These are scouts that Professor Salam has given us. And as Muslim, we need to imbibe all this. He says, Swat is a Zala, if you recite it, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will reward you more as you have as if you have recited one quarter of the whole Quran. The same thing Swat to Kafiru. These are some of the verses of the Quran. He once told one of the Swahaba, Anas bin Malik, that do you know that Swat al Nasir? Swat al Nasir, we all know it. It's Hajar Nasir Allah wal Fati. To the end. It's the verse, the chapter of help. Whoever recites Swat al Nasir any day, Allah wa Ta'ala will continue to help such person. These are hadiths from Thrimidhi and some of the hadith collectors. Then there are some that are, are like Professor Sam said, if you say Bismillah, he led thee. La Yadruma is me shayun filaudi walafi samai wa was sami una lib. Three times in the morning. Allah swana wa tala will protect you from all form of evils. From that morning to evening. And if you do it after sunset, Allah will protect you till fajri. So these are some of the little has come. We still have so many of them. There's a book called Al Masurat. We have Citadel of Believers and some other books like that that we can lay our hands on. This is the month of Ramadan. Remember the last 10 days. He specifically, Professor Hassan specifically gave our mother Aisha or the Allah Anya what will be chanting from the 20th of Ramadan from the Maghrib of 19 to the end of Ramadan. Allahumma ina kafun tuhibbu lafwa fafuan. If you continue to say that, said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exonerate you from hellfire. May Allah accept our decree and make us inmates of Jannah. Akumu ko laza safulai la alakum. Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wa liyawmil akhiri wa al-qadri khayrihi wa al-sharrihi بعد الموت لا إله إلا الله آمنت بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسوله واليوم